Nerves are, are a good thing for singers. Uh, you can help them to, it, sometimes it'll help you to focus and concentrate, try not to let it get in the way. Right. Whatever you want to do to relax, take deep breaths, so jump around, shake out, it doesn't matter, and I'll start whenever you're ready. All right. Talk about your man of soul. There's none like good old Josh. 
<laughs> All right, Siggy, so tell me about nerves. What is it about them that makes it makes it more difficult to sing sometimes? It doesn't really necessarily just because you have them doesn't mean it's harder to sing. It mm -hmm. kind of makes you focus a little bit more sometimes, like now. Yep. Because yesterday I was freaking out about Scarborough Fair mostly because <laughs> The order of it, I was always messing up the verses, but because I'm so nervous, I feel like it helped me concentrate a lot more. Yeah. I agree. And when you can channel that nervousness into greater focus and concentration, that's a cool thing. Um, sometimes we have physical responses to nervousness that we have no control over, whether it's shaking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like shaking and that sort of thing. And it just comes with time and experience the more you do it. I think confidence, too. You know, the, the more that you feel, I got this, the less nervous you're going to be. So we, we won't dwell on that. You do some things really, really well. You have a beautifully resonant tone. Do you, are you studying privately? Do you take private lessons? I do not. You might want to think about it because that resonance is, is, is obviously it's a natural thing uh, to a certain extent, and I'm sure you've worked at it too. Yeah. But across your register, which part of your register would you say is the most resonant? The lower, the middle, or the upper? Probably the upper. I know, I disagree. I think the middle part of your range is, is your most resonant, it, it rings the most. I mean, the other, the other parts of your registers are also nice, but I think the middle part rings the most. And usually it is the upper register with people that, you know, just sort of whoosh. So I think you've got a lot of room to grow, especially in the upper register and even in your lower register. And it, sometimes it takes somebody else sitting there and saying, try this, try that. So if you've got time and money, uh, think about taking some private lessons or doing private study. All right. All right. Um, do you know what a melisma is? I do not. Okay. Melisma is when you sing more than one pitch of a vowel, um, a vowel sound over more than one pitch. Let me tell you right. In, in Joshua fit the battle, that happens on the word of. Joshua fit the battle of Jehovah. Two pitches on a vowel sound. All right. You want to try to avoid, uh, when you have a melisma, articulating with an H. Here's what I'm hearing from you sometimes. Just with the bell of Jericho. Yeah. All right? So it's just something to keep in mind. Sometimes we have melismas that last 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 notes on one. Uh, no, we certainly can't H in between all of them. But at any rate, uh, sing that for me now without the H articulation. Just the opening phrase. You can give it a measure or two. We'll play right along. We'll get it. Yes. 
And that's just in general, in choral singing, you want to try to always sing the diphthong, the first note of the diphthong, as long as you can. Um, you have really good expressiveness on your face. I got the feeling, actually on both songs, but especially on the first one, that during the opening introduction, you either weren't sure what to do, or you were just kind of waiting for your turn to sing. And what I really want to see is what the song is about. Because I've got nothing else to do during the introduction except look at you. And of course, they're looking at you the whole time. Right. All right? This is going to be hard because we're all staring at you. But see if you can do the introduction of Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. What is the emotion in this song? Are you telling a story? Is it something that's dynamic? Is it, is it sad? Is it happy? Tell me. What, what, how would you describe it? Well, it's a story. It is a story. It's sort of a happy story, I guess. Okay. Because he's victorious. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a, uh, a joyous story. If you were telling the story to a bunch of little kids, I like to think of it in that way, so it's very dramatic. You know, when you talk to, have you ever had a chance to talk to a bunch of little kids about yes. something? Tell them a story, right? Yeah. If you go, and did, when the dragon came, you know what you're going to get back from them, right? Yeah. And if you go, when the dragon came, <laughs> you know. So anyway, think about that during the introduction. We're all looking at your face. So try not to be nervous. But see if you can tell us the story during the introduction. Okay. Go ahead. What I really liked is I didn't see much change in your face when you started to sing the song. That tells me you were already there during the introduction. Thank you. Um, so, excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let me see if I read anything else down. I want to make sure you understand. Oh, um, every now and then in the second song, the pitch sags a little bit. That's normal. Um, what do you do when the pitch starts to go a little bit under? What are some things that you can do to help that? I'm not that sure. Okay. Uh, push a little harder here, and I say add resonance. When you, I say add resonance, you raise these facial muscles. Okay? And a lot of times when the pitches go down, when the, when the pitches go down, we have to physically make an effort. It's almost like gravity takes control of the notes when they go down. So we have to just be aware of that and give it extra air and extra resonance. Okay? All right. You're doing some fabulous singing. I hope you're not nervous anymore, and I hope you do this again, and you can be less nervous next time. All right. Excellent. Thank you for singing today. Beautiful job.